Hi everyone, it's Camille and today we are going to parameterize our trading strategy per symbol by pulling out the hard-coded settings from the leader into the database. If you like those videos and you would like to show your appreciations, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Enjoy! Let's start by looking at the task at hand. Let's go to the naive application and go to the leader. If we'll scroll down, we'll see a bunch of hard-coded details that leader uses to trade. The task at hand is to put them in some other space and to define them per symbol so we will be able to fine-tune our strategy at this moment our system consists of four applications of which one is connected to the database. We need to decide where we will put the trading settings for our naive strategy. We can immediately exclude both Binance Smoke and the streamer as it wouldn't make too much sense to add the database to either of them and make them responsible for storing and retrieving the data. We are now left with the data warehouse application and the naive application. Let's analyze what we could do here. This is a really nice example of architectural decisions that you could be required to take in your daily work as a software engineer. First solution could be to go on the path of the least resistance. We could just add a table to the data warehouse applications database and make naive application call the data warehouse application to retrieve those trading settings. It doesn't sound bad immediately, but there are a few concerns about this solution. First, we would have a tight coupling between the naive application and the data warehouse application. Secondly, as our system would grow we would keep on adding new tables for each new strategy to the data warehouse application which feels wrong. Because of those problems I believe that the better way would be to introduce a new database for the naive application. It can still be the same Postgres instance just to make our lives easier. This will keep the naive application decoupled from the data warehouse application as well as the data warehouse application won't be aware of the strategies as it doesn't need to be. Let's start by adding the database access to the naive application. The first step is to add actor related packages to the depths inside the mix file. We are going to use enum so we need to add actor enum as well. We can now use actor generator to add actor repository to the naive application. Back to the ID, we can now modify the config that was added by the generator to point to our Postgres Docker instance. Here we are using different database inside a single Postgres server just to keep things simple. Last step to be able to communicate with database using Ecto will be to add the naive repo as a child of our naive application. We can now create a new naive database using the make CLI tool. After that we will be able to generate a migration file that will create the settings table. We can now copy the current hardcoded settings from the leader and use them as a column list of our new settings table. We will add a unique index on the symbol column to avoid any possible duplicates.
We can now focus on creating a new enum type and adding a column using it. We'll define the enum type itself in the other file as it will be also used in the schema for this table. We can now create a schema directory together with two files, settings and trading status enum. Starting with the enum, we will use the dev enum macro from the ecto enum module to define it. We don't need to define a module here, which is interesting. Let's run the migration to create the table, unique index and the enum. Back to the schema for the settings table. We can now copy column names from our migration script and use them as a fields in our schema. Here we can also see that the same enum is used. That's why we couldn't define it inside the migration. We will copy field names to create default values inside the config that will be used by sitting script which we will write next. As we are already here we will tidy up a bit. Let's copy the default keys and proceed with creating a seed setting script. Our script will fetch symbol list from the Binance and based on them together with the default settings from the config it will both insert default values for all the symbols available in the Binance exchange. To be able to use insert all function on Ecto repo, we will need to set both timestamps in all our settings structs. This is a downside of using insert all instead of insert, but inserting those records one by one would take seconds, so it's well worth it as this takes just milliseconds.
In one of the earlier videos a bug sneaked in that will cause our script to break. We will need to add the Binance mock to the dependencies of the naive app. The final step will be to update the leader to fetch the settings from the database. We can now run the seeding script and move on to the testing. As usual we will start the streaming and then start trading on the symbol. As we can see everything works as expected. We can now fine tune our trading strategy per symbol just by modifying the rows in the database table. As usual this is just a beginning and the aim is to provide a functionality, functionality of auto starting the trading based on those settings. That's why we introduce a status column in this episode. Recently I also started to work on my first book that will be a written representation of my videos dedicated to create a cryptocurrency trading bot in Elixir. It's an ongoing project and the, my objective is to get it to, up to speed to, to be in line with all the videos that I'm releasing and at that moment publish it and keep on updating it as we go. And if you are one of those people that prefer reading or you just want to show your support to what I'm doing here, feel free to register I will your register your interest. I will put the link below and hopefully one day you will be able to get your book and enjoy it. Otherwise, don't forget to leave like and subscribe and see you in the next episode.